Legend has it, we could be legends Etched in the stone, forever on thrones Histories made in the moments Heroes collide, it's all on the line With our backs against the wall We came to fight Welcome at the Lake of Zurich Somewhere behind me there and to our video today uh, where we're going to be testing what we put together last week which is this rig over here if you can see it the red Komodo in the gates housing and the Lefit S1 Pro dual scooter setup uh, to propel it through the water now I found a way uh, in last week's video to attach these two scooters onto the housing and uh, with a little bit of trial and error I also found a way of attaching the handle which is actually now on the uh, proper original um, handle grip. Um, I just needed to take it off before attaching it back onto the scooter and it worked out to be attached there and work there just fine. And today we'll take it in the water and see whether or not we can get some more stable shots with that setup. Sebastian's also here, right there in the background, um, where he's actually put his stuff nicely together again just before everything was all over the place and for some reason he had his uh, red Komodo sitting on the lens which for whatever reason you want to do that he had it sitting that way maybe he was trying to balance it out in one way or another um, I've also got myself some more of these um, adjustable float arms uh, so I can put my Keldon light on there because I think that this setup here is gonna be pretty heavy and I do need some extra flotation devices to keep it afloat but we'll test that right now I'll get in the water and just test the stability and uh, the, the buoyancy of the rig and then we'll take it for a bit of a spin Sebastian's gonna take some b-roll footage of uh, myself testing it and I will just swim around and have some fun and maybe I'll swim all the way over to Rapper's Will and back to Zurich depending on how far these little scooters will pull me through the water. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Let's go and get wet. And we're back in the office. That was actually pretty cool playing around with that dual scooter setup. Now let's have a look at if the uh, footage that I was able to collect using the scooter to propel me through the water, if that was really more stable than the footage that I uh, shot without the scooter on. But I'm not just going to show you the footage and tell you whether or not it is more stable, smoother um, and whether or not I like it better with or without the scooter. But let's play a little game. I've got five, um, five shots, five uh, clips that I'll show you and I'll ask you to guess whether that clip has been shot using the scooter as assistance to get me through the water or not. They're each 20 seconds long. The first sort of 10, 12, 14 seconds will be for you to guess. And then I'll let you know with a little subtitle whether or not it has been uh, shot using the scooter or not. 
So let's see how many you can get right. So how did that go? How many did you guess right out of the five clips that I showed you? Let me know down in the comment section below the video. So let's talk about the good and the bad of using this dual setup, um, scooter setup on the um, Red Komodo um, rig. Now let's talk about the good things first. What I really liked is that it actually worked in the way that I've put it all together. I wasn't entirely sure how well it would work but it did work without any issues. Another good thing is also that because the scooter is a modular system you can pair both those units to one remote control and you can control both of them simultaneously with just that one um, remote which is great because you only have to push that one button or pull back on that one lever and both will work at the same time at the same force so that's really really convenient. Now using two scooters and such a setup you will get quite a bit of power and force out of those two scooters and I personally found that I didn't really want to have them set to anything other than the lowest power setting. Um, on the lowest power setting they were going fast enough for me, sometimes even a little too fast, so they were even a little too strong. If I went to the medium or even the highest setting when it comes to the power output, they were just going too fast and I uh, sometimes wasn't even able to control them properly. So um, I would recommend to use it on the lowest power setting which is actually a good thing because it saves a lot of battery power or battery life if you can use those scooters on the lowest power level throughout the entire dive and that way these scooters will also last or the batteries will also last for an entire dive I found. Now let's have a look at the things that I don't like too much or didn't like too much about that setup on my Red Komodo rig. Well, first of all, it adds quite a bit of extra weight to the rig itself. The rig itself is already heavy as it is. Putting those two scooters on the bottom of it just makes it really heavy. Outside of the water, it's a bit of a pain getting that rig uh, into the water and out of the water and back to the car and all that sort of stuff. Once it's in the water, it's fine. I mean, I had to get some more of the adjustable float arms. I needed to put some extra flotation devices on there. It still wasn't perfectly neutral, neutrally buoyant, but it was getting there fairly well. Um, I'd probably have to put some extra floats still on there to make it completely neutrally buoyant. Because the setup is fairly heavy, um, it does put a fair bit of, uh, of strain on your wrists when you use it underwater, just trying to maneuver it around. Also while you're um, using the scooters can be very strenuous and can put some extra weight or extra force onto your wrist. So just be careful with that. 
if you're trying to do longer shots where you run with the scooter for an extended period of time and you just have to you know just do the adjustments with your wrist so that the camera keeps positioned in the way that you want it to be that can be uh, that can be a little tiring um, after a bit of time doing that um, what I've also found is that this is probably something that I do need to work on uh, in the engineering department that whenever I started using the scooters the, uh, the scooters would just bump the camera up just slightly towards the surface and I had to counteract that with my wrists and that's probably where most of the strain got put onto my wrist. So by hopefully putting the scooters a little more forward and adjusting that weight a little bit, um, hopefully they will not do that twist up to the surface every time you uh, push down on uh, the throttle to start moving with the scooters. And last but not least, the added stability. Now, I'm not entirely sure how you felt about seeing the clips before. Um, I personally don't really think that the scooters are adding an enormous amount of extra stability to the footage. And this has probably different reasons. First of all, the Komodo rig as it is, is already very well balanced in the water, which makes it much, much easier to get stable shots because you could basically just push it through the water and you don't really have to hold on uh, like it's like your life is depending on it onto the uh, rig, which is giving it a little extra wobble here and there. Um, also, I find that with the lowest power setting, as we said before, is the one that I wouldn't use anything else than that. Anything else is too fast for me. But even the lowest power setting, in my opinion, is a little too fast. And if I look at the footage, um, I would actually like it to be a little slower than what it is, even with that lowest uh, power setting. So by using my fins, I can control the speed a little better. Yes, I can definitely not go as fast as I would go with the scooter, but in terms of controlling the speed, and slowing down, I can do that much better just with my fins rather than with the scooter. So summing up the pros and cons, um, I still think that this is a really cool tool and a great companion to get you to dive sites and back. And that's where I probably would use those scooters and the scooter setup like this on a larger rig like the Red Komodo. Um, if I have to go further out to get to a certain dive site and I carry a large camera rig with me, which can be very tiring swimming out a long way with such a rig, I can use the scooters to get me there. Once I'm there, I'll turn off the scooters. I have a hopefully perfectly balanced system even with the scooters on there. I still need to work a little on that, but that's something that I need to figure out. Um, and then I can have the scooters turned off and just use the camera as it is to capture my shots. I don't really see myself at this point using the scooter to get moving shots too much. Unless there is a current that I need to fight, swim against the current, I can use the scooter to assist me to achieve that and uh, not be pushed away by the current. But other than that, I don't really think I'll be using the scooter too much for that. But as I said, it's still a very um, useful tool to get you to further away dive sites that you normally would not go to because the swim out there would be just too strenuous, too long, too tiring. And so that's pretty much my first impression after having put together this uh, dual scooter setup on my red Komodo um, underwater camera rig and having used it um, once only so far. But I'm definitely going to be using it more in the future, trying to uh, sort of fine tune the buoyancy and everything like that um, and seeing how this works. And uh, to see what project I can possibly use it on best in the future. Now, I would be very interested also in hearing your opinion about such a dual scooter setup on an underwater camera rig. Do you think that this is something worthwhile or can you live without it without problems? Let me know down in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to engage into a little discussion with you about this topic. And that's pretty much about it for today. Um, one thing before I let you go, just as a quick reminder, we still have a couple of spots left on our upcoming underwater videography workshop in 
Egypt coming up and being held in Marsa Chagra village from the 19th to the 26th of November this year, 2022. Um, I will definitely be having those two scooters with me and uh, if you choose to join us on this underwater videography workshop, you're more than welcome to take them for a spin with your underwater camera rig and see how you like it for yourself. I'll leave a link down in the video description below leading you to the trip booklet for the underwater videography workshop. If you're interested, get your information there and then send me your registration form so we can get everything rolling and have you with us on that workshop. And that's pretty much all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for your time and for watching. As always, I hope this video was entertaining, useful, educational uh, to you. And if that was the case, please do hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you're not missing out on any future content that will be uploaded here. Until next week, enjoy capturing your underwater adventures and I will see you in the next video.